How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another month in Vertex Idol. We just came off of Neon Zero. Sold out uh, uh, studio that we have. 500 people, good uh, good amount there. We're making some decent money, kind of, sort of, as long as we're not spending a, an obscene amount. Uh, we seem to be doing okay. Uh, it looks like, though, things might get a little different coming up. I see 24 233 and we're going to be losing a little bit of money. And I believe that is because we are starting to really hit a downturn in both the economy and the wrestling industry. Pretty much everywhere. Uh, everyone, you know, some of it's kind of rising. I think the only place might be like Australia. Yeah, Australia is the only one where it's on the upswing right now. But, you know, it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and uh, get going on that. We've got a set of TV tapings to do as well as an event for Idol Pro. And I think we've already got that settled in and taken care of. We got... Uh, yeah, we got three events, two regular and a uh, shortened little uh, pop-up show. And I think that'll be pretty much the month. So go ahead and get moving here. I don't think there was anybody. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. I don't want to screw something over here. Or screw myself over, honestly. Uh, did I make the cuts that I was going to? I didn't. Okay. Uh, I think I will make the cuts that I was going to. Uh, once I get to a point where I realize, you know what? Even though I might be doing quite a bit, I think there's just not. There's just a few people that I was like, mm, I'm not really doing anything with them. And at this point, probably better to just not have to worry about them being, being there. Sorry. That's about all we needed there. Um, nothing there. Let's see. Before I changed too much here, I think everything's done for that. Vertigo, I believe. Uh, did my... Okay, I did change my TV tapings. Do I need to change it to someone else? Yes, I do. I need to change it to Friday. So I'll modify this, move these both over to Friday for right now. Come back to see you're firing your most over talent. Eh, at least I bury them before I fire them. <laughs> I kind of put some people over with them. It's fine. I got to make room for, <laughs> I got to make room for other people that have been put into this database since. Uh, okay, so I changed it to Friday. Oh, I was changing a character. That's right. I have a character to change. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He's been gone for a little while anyway, so... There we go. Uh, I don't want to save it as an alter ego. Nah. I want to see what other alter egos did he have in here? Oh, Wani. Hmm. Only in Chikara. Oh, he's a Chikara guy. A late, later Chikara guy, I believe. Being 28 years old, of course. <laughs> I wanted to change his, since he's been off of TV for a little bit, I figured, you know what, Good, better to change his character now while he hasn't been around. Uh, let's prepare a gimmick change. Let's see here. Uh, offbeat, can't do it. Comedy, could do comedy. We'll do a swagger. <clears throat> Um, 
what would I call this? Oh Jesus! I'm gonna I'm gonna look up exactly how to spell connoisseur because. Mm. Okay, I figured I was probably on my on my way. Uh, da, da, da. There you go. Ah. Uh, I'd say it about has about, I'm giving it probably the highest possible chance of completely falling on its face. Uh, maybe not just a wine. Let's see. Al alcohol. Connoisseur. Makes you remarkable. Gives a large boost. Yeah, we'll see how what well, we'll see what happens with this. Set to change. I think we're pretty good then. So I changed the character. I changed the day of tapings. So I think we're good to go. Do you have the war dogs in the game? Uh, that's uh, what's what's their name? I forget. It's is it Alex Coughlin and somebody else, right? Do they have their team name on? Do they have a team? Is he part of a team? Let me see here. Dan Maloney. Um, I'm pretty sure Clark Connors is on here for sure because I was getting ready to possibly try to get him. I don't know. With like the New Japan Zero One thing, it's it's odd because. Yeah, let's see. Pretty sure Dan Maloney. Yeah. shortlist all of them um i haven't seen a lot of dan maloney but i've seen a lot of alex coughlin i've seen enough alex coughlin that i'll do that and i've seen enough clark connors to shortlist him as well i might have to see some more dan maloney stuff though <laughs> My short list, my short list can 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 afford to uh, to raise up a little bit. I have fair few people. Um, I think other than that, we could pretty much get moving to the next uh, get moving to the next thing here. Last stream we posted about Team Alpha Male. their photo shoot oh yeah 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 oh god a lot of people have been forgotten uh-oh well, injury for tessa blanchard that's fine she's still working she's in nxt uk wwe finally kind of hired her uh bobby beverly trent sevens recovered this guy a lot of guys who aren't being used. I noticed the lights were on and I thought you might be home. I wasn't sure. These guys seem to have, um, a lot of these guys seem to have, um, you know, nice enough photos like him. I would assume, well, he's an American. So I'm, I was like, this looks like these almost look like progress photos. These almost look like they were, but the but a lot of these are American, so I don't know. GCW guys, maybe? I don't know. Lesser GCW guys. <laughs> I don't know. They got the, uh, yeah, if you have Alex Coughlin stuff, we did manage to watch a, uh, a New Japan show because I ran out of Joshi stuff for my friends to woo over. And uh, they seem to really like Alex Coughlin, especially the, uh, yeah, especially the, uh, my, my friend's uh, wife, just all shirtless and smoking. And it's, it's a thing. <laughs> Uh, 
Let's see. AEW hire AJ Styles. He said he was never going to wrestle past W. He said he was going to wrestle in WWE till he retires. What a carny. Uh, let's see. Set their sights. All sights on Camille. Hotly tipped to be a huge star with TJPW. How about with Idol Pro? Making her a, a, a big star for us. Oh, yeah. Medical. What? Where's the medical? Isn't medical in here somewhere? M medical. I was like, medical is there somewhere. Uh, Himika's being worked through. Lady C. Yeah, the other ones are not going to be around for a while. Do you buy tickets yet for the Revolver show in December? I need to. I have not. I'm usually one of those uh, late people. I'm usually one of those people that like two weeks before when they do like a $10 off deal is usually when I get them because I always do GA anyway, mostly because uh, I, I wouldn't mind doing like a front two or three rows, but those literally get sold before the previous show is done <laughs> at the show. So there's almost no use trying to get the first two rows unless you're literally like uh, during intermission going and buying them from the previous show sight unseen it's fine i usually sit somewhat near the bleachers anyway usually i just find a spot to to hang out uh joe doring quitting zero one is he being Joe Doring wouldn't be too bad, especially when we got a guy like Manders, too. Joe Doring could be a guy who could be paired up with Manders, probably. They both have a pretty similar style. Oh. Let's see. Uh, yeah, he's not hurt or anything. He's doing pretty well. Uh, let's look at this. Yeah, he's pretty much leveled out, I would assume, at 40 years old. Consistency going down ever so slightly. Stamina is... Whoo! And athleticism starting to go down. Everything's starting to go down quickly. Uh, everything's really starting to go down quickly. How are your relationship with your companies? Because the tactic you always do is be friends with almost every company. I've considered that, but I, I don't know. Right now, I haven't really uh, done that tactic yet. Just been... Uh, yeah, see, within a year, he's dropped quite a bit in some of these things. So, yeah, he's only got about a about a year left in him, maybe. And he's already dropping fast. Uh, that's poor Joe Dory. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to. Uh, if I'm going to, I'll shortlist him. But if I'm going to hire him, I'm going to hire him soon. NWA Southeastern Heavyweight. It's a, it's a dark she Aquino. I think Aquino actually just wrestled. Uh, was it Seedling or Marvelous? Uh, fuck, I can't remember. Was it Sendai Girls? One of the lower, one of the other, other shows just wrestled on it. Miko Aono? Has she been hired by anybody? Ice Ribbon, of course. I mean, that's not saying much, I guess. Um, Yeah, we'll just keep going. I don't have anything really to add to this right now. I did, um, on top of... of uh, on top of all the booking and stuff did end up taking, I think one of the more recent, um, real world Chronicles mods. And I realized there's quite a few like Japanese, uh, venues that just aren't in here. AEW have made a contract offer to Martina. Oh no. 
So I'll tell you right now, that did not happen in my pre-book. Some wild shit did happen on my pre-book, though. Did she leave it? No, she didn't. Dude, that'd be great. She gets hired by Ice Ribbon and just immediately leaves. It'd be amazing if that was like it was in real life. And it was just like, fuck this. <laughs> Everyone's just jumping ship. Yeah, I think in 2016, I did a lot of the, uh, you know, be friends with almost every company just so I could steal people. <laughs> Effie, what did Effie do? Uh, cheerful. He was he was cheerful. You know, there was a there was a term for that back in the old days that would perfectly encompass a double entendre of what Effie is. Uh, all right. So yeah, Vertigo Studio, of course, will be there. What's the difference in the cost? Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks. Fuck it, to keep it in our little our little neck of the woods. It might be a little bit more because I think I'm gonna increase the um, I think I'm gonna increase the capacity here after the tapings. You know how hard it was to find this channel again. I apologize. <laughs> I should have a more memorable, I really should have a more memorable name. And at one point I really did consider like, Hey, let me just try to do all of that. Like actually get like a nice rebrand going. I really should do that since I have like MW gaming for like my YouTube. I really should just at the very least change my Twitch to that. I don't know about my Twitter. I'm sure I could probably find something similar i really should do that though i just never really got around to it all right let's uh quick book this here let's see here darius lockhart jerome daniels timmy breton mike 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 but welcome you did find your way back, and I appreciate that. Welcome. It probably doesn't help that I don't give my uh, my titles. That's another thing, too, is I really need to put, like, some actual decent titles to my stuff instead of blah, 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 episode blah. I bet you they'd probably get more people watching if I actually put my latest, like, NBA 2K14, like, hey, Michael Jordan's first game with the magic? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark. Or like with my most recent WMMA thing, it's just like Crow Cop versus Fedor. Straight edge like CM Punk, yeah. But then also a bunch of random numbers, which is, you know, not very good for, for uh, SEO. Probably not great. I really should get on that. I really should do that at some point. So you are in your clickbait title now. I haven't done it yet, but I should. I should I should do that. I don't even know if it's it's not clickbait title because it's it's what happened where it was like WMMA Fedor versus Crow Cop and then just a picture of me with like my mouth open and my eyes wide like ah I bet you I could find that on YouTube. I bet you I could err on uh Google here. Just put like YouTube, YouTube, thumbnail, mouth, open. YouTube, open, mouth, thumbnail. But yeah, just make like any of these. Just make like any of these faces. These faces, that face. Yeah, just any of those faces that you generally... Uh, would associate with with uh, YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> if she loses, she strips. Uh, all right. Let me let me let me actually let me actually do this. Uh, let me see here, Jerome Daniels. These guys don't really team up that much, so. There you go. 
13 total minutes. <laughs> We've got, uh, let's see, Pero took a loss, so we should do that. We'll have Jerome Daniels uh, make it an open match, make it decisive. Uh, at ringside will be Mark Hart, and we're good to go. I got to tell you, I, I, man, if there was any day to talk about how skilled you are in professional wrestling, picking a day after you had a nightmarish, you did a nightmarish job on a show is certainly a choice. Um, Darius Lockhart. Uh, Jerome Daniels, Timmy Lou Retton, Odinson, and Pero. What did I miss? Oh, just, you know, <laughs> I think I, I mentioned it to a friend at work. I'm like, listen, this is a woman. She claimed that she was the best unsigned uh, commentator uh, today. And uh, she's a very nice person. I've met her. She's a very nice person. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, there we go. It's for the it's for the same thing that you linked to me on on Twitter about uh, the Skabon. I did actually watch Skabon, and. Uh, what an interesting show. I don't know. I don't even know if I want to think it's good or bad. I I don't know if I if I don't know what to think about how good. You know what? I didn't think it was all that good. And then we got um uh what was it? Maya Yukihi and uh Risa Sarah consistent panty shots. And I thought, you know what? This is the greatest promotion ever. You guys can do whatever you want. <laughs> Whoever designed these costumes, sure. <laughs> uh, entertainment, 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 entertainment. Yeah, I don't know if Veda sucks. I mean, that Scape on show really is not a great showcase of her. I thought she's okay, but I really felt like I was taking crazy pills when uh, people were like, they should replace Kevin Kelly for her. I can't believe that she's not signed. I can't believe she's not calling Collision every week. It's like, do you guys watch shows with her on? She's all right, but... Uh, That's just that's just my opinion. It's just like she's all right, but I mean, the, I did see someone who made a great point where it was basically okay. Tell me another unsigned commentator, because I'm sure you don't like Kevin Kelly, but give me another unsigned commentator to compare her to, and we'll see if she's better than them. Uh, AR Fox doing his thing, doing his thing. There you go. There was a guy who recently signed a New Japan. Who was that? Was it a commentator guy or? There's a guy recently signed to New Japan. Oh, Katsuhiko Nakajima? Oh, wait, no, he hasn't left yet. Good Lord. I saw a lot of people saying he should show up in AEW. Why? God help me. I think, I think, I think, once again, He's certainly not bad, but I feel like a lot of people are treating him like Japanese top talent. Everyone says he's great. He's all right. He's good. But it's like, I, I don't know. Stick with the New Japan guys. 
Um, there's a vignette, so we'll just do the microphone. This is rated on his uh, star quality, I guess. Uh, he's he's just being talked about. So. There you go. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it had to. I had to at least. I I, I wouldn't. I'd be remiss to to mention the fact that Nakajima not only is leaving, but also. Uh, but also the fact that he talked about going overseas because that was a thing that I just read like just a, just earlier this evening where it was like he'd like to get he you know he'd like to work overseas in America and, and WWE and AEW might be interested and it's like ah. just get Kenta that'll be better Kenta wants to come over. Kenta wants to come over. Just get Kenta. Come on. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> I was, I, I'm wondering, like, is Nakajima going to just, like, shoot on somebody towards the end there? Be like, ah, I'm going to look like a badass. Nakajima is better than current Kenta. I guess so, because he's several years younger at the very least, and he's not as injured as uh, Kenta. Let's see, open match. Uh, let's go tainted win. I don't. I didn't put it specifically in here, but I feel like I had some sort of <laughs> some sort of cheaty finish to have done get the win in the main event. 57, perfect. Let's see. I don't think you watch current Noah that much. No, not really. I don't know. I saw the big, like, uh, what was it? Jake Lee's defending his title against something or other. Is it Shiozaki? No, I don't think so. It's not Nakajima. I don't know. I've seen people talk about how they're not how just in general well a lot of people are saying well he's one of the best guys to i don't know i'm not gonna i, I won't get too far into it because i don't know enough about noah honestly uh he's talking about nick dinsmore so maybe that'll at least help him even though he's off screen there you go see what happens there boom <laughs> Uh, Timmy Lou Retton's being used too much. He literally is being used for two small angles in a Mac on Skabon. It was okay. The JTO girls put on the best match, I think. Which is saying something, considering Arisa Nakajima was, was in the main event. Or no, it wasn't Nakajima. Arisa Nakajima was there. And then the fact that Sariana was in the main event. And Soriana was fucking wrestling with her outfit more than she was wrestling with Sayaka. <laughs> Sorry, Soriano having to, yeah, having to wrestling with her outfit just as much as she was wrestling with Sayaka. I was like, you know what? God damn, this is a fantastic show. Was it, was it, was it Maya Yukihi who was the one who also had the, her fucking panties everywhere? I'm pretty sure. I'd have to go back and look, but I'm I'm pretty sure. Dude, Konami, Ko oh my God, dude, Konami, Konami coming out in that fucking outfit, especially the juxtaposition of that Konami from fucking God's Eye Konami. It's like I just watched her. It wasn't that long ago. It was like a week or two ago. I watched her fucking white belt match with Mirai, just a completely different character than what she just came out in. I was like, what the shit? Ah, uh, it's, it felt that, that almost felt weird because it's like, it's one thing when some of them are at least dressed up enough that they don't feel like Risa Sarah didn't feel like Risa Sarah, but Konami literally just came out in Konami. Konami literally just came out with, as Konami with like this blue, bright blue outfit that just didn't, it all, it just felt weird. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. 
I don't know. Maybe it was maybe it was just more the juxtaposition between her actual character in Stardom and this character in Skabon. Considering she still uses the same name. Uh oh yeah, Atomic Banshee. Whoever made Ram's fucking outfit A plus. Uh okay. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Vertigo Attack, episode number 41. We are coming off of the heels of Neon Zero. And we're going to start immediately a cold open with Lockhart, Inc. We haven't seen Lockhart, Inc. in a little bit. Uh, they've, been, uh, they've been talking about, they've been talking about uh, targets and people who they're uh, looking at uh, dealing with. And they have found some new targets in uh, who they consider Neanderthals in Paro and Odinson in the end. So that's uh, that's who they are actually going to be facing in this opening contest, which uh, doesn't go much long. Just goes just over 11 minutes. They hit the last rights on Jerome Daniels, get the win and the end with a solid performance. These guys have not... Uh, these guys have not uh, teamed together, I think, in a little bit. Pero has been kind of doing his own thing, so good to see them getting back into the groove here with the win against Daniels and Retton. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, the the deep dive on the Skabon stuff, like, I think, uh, I don't know if it was Reddit who did it or 4chan who did the deep dive and found, like, all the people involved, basically, except for the people who seem to be handling the money. Which is really the biggest one, but yeah, that was the that was the general idea is that Skabon is some sort of money laundering front because it's just like they're using like a world renowned like uh, they're using like a half decent animation guy. I say half decent. I don't think they were insane, but but I think like the costume designer and the nail designer were like top notch. We're we're like top notch fashion people. I just don't think they can uh, they can create outfits for wrestling, but yeah, I'd be interested in knowing who's fronting the money because everything everything about it sounds like they're literally just giving money away, which is the opposite of what you would do if you were running a, a wrestling promotion generally, and you were not trying to just launder money. <laughs> uh, sorry, Lockhart Inc. After the opening contest, from behind, attack the end with a crowbar, lay them out. And uh, Lockhart Inc. stands over them, and it looks like they're not done with them. As uh, it looks like they uh, they they might uh, be continuing their assaults on the end. We got the throwbacks backstage once again. Garrett Gra uh, Garrett Garrison and uh, Cannon, and uh, they're there with their beer and their cards and their uh, Paps Blue Ribbon. And uh, Drew Parker comes by. He uh, talks to them, has a bit of a conversation with them, grabs a Paps Blue Ribbon, chugs it, and uh, he's about ready to go out, get ready for his match, which will be in just a few minutes. Uh, and then we get him uh, coming out here. Oh, that's, did I forget? No, I didn't forget anything. Okay, that, that I, I, it wasn't uh, that. But either way, AR Fox is his opponent here. Take it on Drew Parker. Superb wrestling, good heat, just under 12 and a half minutes. Uh, AR Fox finishes him off. Pretty decent match between them. Very good match, honestly. Uh, Drew Parker holding his own on this one, though. But AR Fox getting the better of him uh, in a great match here. And then, of course, getting on the mic. Once again, reiterating a guy like Drew Parker being one of the new guys, potentially trying to take a spot, being one of the new uh, flavors of the month for Vertigo, continuing his mission against anyone who tries to jump the line. As it uh, looks like AR Fox is uh, still still going through anyone who's not a uh, not a not an early guy here when he was when he was around. Uh, so yeah, Anthony Mayweather with his uh, title. Uh, not here, but as a vignette where he discusses Mike Bailey, he said he respects Mike Bailey, what he's done, winning the uh, Gold Label Classic, as well as the accolades that he has had uh, in the Indies and in Japan. But uh, as much as he respects the, the drive that he has had and what he has done, uh, what he is not able to do is become the Vertigo World Champion. And he will prove that at Wrestle Zenith when they face off. And he knows Bailey will not get it done. 
Uh, we get another one. Uh, we get Ricky Starks out, and uh, he talks about the Gold Label Classic and uh, not happy that he wasn't able to win, but he feels like he is a major star, and he will continue to be a major star in Vertigo. And if he's not getting a world championship match, then he wants a match at Wrestle Zenith worthy of his star power. He knows Nick Dinsmore doesn't seem to be here and uh, and uh, seems to be hurt. But uh, he says when Dinsmore gets back, he is looking forward to talking to him and uh, finding a match worthy of his star power. We get our main event. Speaking of Dinsmore, JT Dunn. The man who laid him out versus Christian Casanova. Great wrestling at decent reaction. JT Dunn with a little bit of cheating uh, gets the win, a surprise win over Casanova here in just over 13 minutes in the main event. And as Casanova argues with the ref and heads to the back, Dunn grabs a microphone and uh, defends himself saying that Nick Dinsmore crossed a line at Neon Zero getting in his face and, uh, you know, physically trying to reprimand him. And he had no choice but to defend himself with his uh, elbow pad. He had to he had to uh, he had to eliminate the threat that was in front of him. And uh, that was the only way he knew how. So he said this is Dinsmore's fault and and uh, hopefully taught him a lesson. 58. Pretty good show. On to the next one. Set up test run for some live action anime. Interesting. Yeah, because they're not supposed to have another show until like December. So I'm wondering what they mean by like live action anime then. Uh, tag match. Is this is this like the global is this like the global force thing where they do like the TV tapings and the pilot <laughs> and they shoot the pilot to to potentially send it to uh, to TV in hopes of getting TV rather than uh, you know trying to get someone else to pay for a pilot? I forgot to add a team. Add a team. Ueno, Shunma Katsumata, we'll do unit, add team, there we go. Tag match. There we go, and flip forever. Boom. We got 10 minutes total. Yeah, I'm interested about the idea of a uh, setup test run for, I mean, I don't, what are they, what are they going to try to do for a live action anime? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard people just say that it was a money, practically a mo everything about it, <laughs> rather than live action anime. Like, yeah, maybe live action anime, but uh, done to convince investors. I mean, they must have spent a shitload of money, though. Half live action, half anime. I mean, at that point, they're really just trying to convince what? Crunchyroll? <coughs> to do, like, half anime? Unless they're going to complete their own, like, little... Um, unless they're basically completing their own... Uh, what what's what would it be uh, like uh, animation studio and then have someone pay for it that way? Uh, let's see. How'd you get like your Vertigo logos? Be able to make some. Uh, you would like to make some of your custom brands. I I just made them myself. It's literally just text, and then I did it in Photoshop, and then eventually scaled down the logo so that I could uh, put it in the game. It's it's nothing really. Um, it's nothing really like uh, out of the ordinary with um, how I did it. Yeah, it's it's all just yeah, it's all just basic stuff I usually grab off of. Uh, here, give me a second here. It's usually just all basic stuff I, I grab off of uh, online. So yeah, that all that all that is is just text, and then I threw a couple lines down there. You don't really see it as much in the small text, but 
Yeah, and then it's just figuring out something that kind of looks decent in your uh, in your eyes, and then putting it to a background to whatever uh, thing you have, like with the picture pack that I use for this mod. I believe is what's considered best to go with this mod. Yeah, it's mostly just text. Um, I can't really show a mod of my other pay-per-view ones, but it's also just pretty basic shapes too. Nothing, nothing really, nothing really crazy. Just a lot of like uh, experimentation and trial and error. As far as ah, uh, does this look crap? Oh, well, maybe if I did this, okay, now it looks less crap. And then just kind of figure it out until something looks okay. Uh, Zachary Wentz, Desmond Xavier, Nicky Wayno, Shun Makatsmana. Uh, I don't think they're gonna do or say anything. I think they'll just be there. There you go. Wallpapers, you've done a pretty good one, Jet. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it really is, is just time. Time and effort. Eventually you get better at it, I think. You know? Especially when you look at other people doing stuff, you know? I, I think, like, I could probably, I could probably. Uh, I'm going to move this over so I can find it. I could probably show you like how I started, like when 2016 was around real quick, because like I said, time is really all it mostly is, is as you get, as you do more and more, you just end up getting better. So like when I had like my main event for, uh, for like my TEW thing, this is like, this is what like one of my first main event things looked like, where it was just like, Oh, I just found a couple things and did that. And it just looks like trash sort of. And then as I got farther along, it actually started looking actually a hell of a lot nicer. So yeah, over time, it really just, you, you just sort of find something that, that looks better. And then eventually you'll get better th just through experience. That's basically all it is. Um, let me see here. Lockhart Inc. So we got Darius Lockhart. We've got Jerome Daniels. We've got Timely Retton. Do their thing. Uh, I think just give them the mic because it's a vignette, I think. Yeah, sort of. It's not in front of people, so. Skip on's the most wrestling thing you've seen in forever. Literally set up a wrestling show solely to meet and greet with. Set up a wrestling show solely to meet and greet with influencers, TV people to get a deal to make a TV show. So you can then never do live events again and make money on anime, live action, story, gang show that has some wrestling elements. Interesting. Is that why there seems to be like potentially so little actually show? Because there was a lot more people. I feel like they sold. I hear. I hear they sold something like two to four hundred tickets. But they definitely. It definitely held more than two to four hundred people. So I'm wondering how many of those tickets they just straight up gave away to influencers and other people, which is also probably why they picked New York City. Uh, Effie, uh, open match, we'll do tainted because it's sort of tainted with uh, distraction finish. Actually, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll just make it a regular decisive victory. Okay, John said like 700 people showed up. Yeah, they, there seemed to be like bigger bleachers there. So it's like, I'm not surprised by the idea that if it, if there it was that many people, it wouldn't shock me because, you know, they made it sound like it was smaller and it was mostly just going to be floor things, but they had, mu they had goddamn bleachers. Someone brought in goddamn bleachers for that show. Someone spent money on that. Uh, AR Fox. Brandon Tate. Yeah, that also explains the TikTok, the TikTok live thing, because, you know, influencers doing their thing there. 
because why not just stream it on? Especially considering they ended up putting it on YouTube like three days later anyway. But yeah. Uh, let's see here. Entertainment, fighting, fighting, selling. Successes, successes, defeat, boom. This should be, this can be, oh my God. I was expecting this to go. See, I got, I got into, I got into, <laughs> I got into conversations here <laughs> and it's already 45 minutes in. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, we're looking at Jesse and Preston and Caesar and that's the throwbacks. So we're looking at um, AJ Garrett. I have to remember Riff Garrison, Eric Cannon. So, uh. <clears throat> I guess it kind of sort of builds them all up, maybe. I like the idea that it builds them all up. If we're building up to a match. I think that storyline of minor success, a little bit of momentum. <clears throat> makes a lot of sense in my mind. Here we go. Two minutes of Mike Bailey vignette. Um, microphone. Success. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. The idea of, yeah, influencers, TV people get a deal so they never have to do live events again. So then I'm really confused by the whole thing. So then they're doing like, they're doing like Makai basically, but with anime. So it's like half anime, half Makai. But then even Makai is still technically like a stage show unless the whole thing is just going to be like some weird CGI crowd and that it's just this weird mix. It, Cause then it would mostly just be an anime thing, but then they're doing some wrestling stuff. My head hurts thinking about this. <laughs> My head hurts just thinking about it. We're going to we're going to run this wrestling show so that we don't actually have to run this wrestling show. Mark Newsom, Olympia Latan. Okay, Olympia Latan is something that I've heard before. Mark Newsom. Hmm. One of the guys is a former vice guy. Yeah, that that sounds about right. <laughs> does he have a does he have a Wikipedia? He does have a Wikipedia. Hmm. So yeah, all of this is just weird. So all of this is just sort of weird, uh, like, yeah, fashion stuff, industrial designer. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out. I mean, I guess you probably have enough people who, you know, who might just be more excited to see the actual women. But like, then I guess if you're trying to basically sell a TV show, that's not even going to, that's not even going to mean anything. Is it where it's like, Oh, I just wanted to see, yeah, this is one of the, I live in New York and I'm no, not going to go to the West coast to see Sayaka Nagi, but here's a version of her that I can actually meet. Did they even have a meet and greet afterwards? Probably not. I assume they probably, I assume they probably didn't the the wrestlers themselves. I I'm pretty sure the uh well no, I think they have like merch merch kind of now, but huh. 
I assume it didn't feel like a regular wrestling show where like the wrestlers were were having merch tables to sell their hawk their wares. It would probably feel very weird to just be at that show, if I gotta be honest. Cardona, Miller. There you go. I'll put the belt on the line. Should be a decent enough little match. One of the guys, yeah, being a former Vice guy. Tokyo Joshi Pro starting to get into that too, I think. I think one of the uh, one of the new people, the American woman, or the white woman that TJPW is making like their uh, one of their one of their new uh, trainees is, I guess, married to a guy who works at Crunchyroll. That was something that they that uh, people saw. go the Aussie chick yeah I was gonna say I didn't know exactly what she was but she was yeah the Gaijin the 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 yeah let's see Matt Cardona Drew Parker Eddie Edwards Entertainment, entertainment, entertainment. Boom, boom, and boom. All right. Uh, I don't think there should be anything wrong. All right, let's go. All right, everyone, a Vertigo Attack episode of 42. For week number two here, the second in the tapings, we start off with a high-flying tag team match. 37 Kamina recently debuted uh, attacking the Rascals after their match. They're taking on Flip Forever. A decent little match between uh, the two teams here. And uh, and uh, as we see, just under eight and a half minutes, 37 Kamina getting the win. Yuki Ueno gets Eli Everfly with a frog splash and gets the win for himself and Shunma. And uh, as they celebrate, the rascals get on the screen, yell at them. 37 Kamina. All right, asshole, tell me why it's 37 Kamina. Should I just call them Sauna Club since that's the whole point? Um, It's Sauna Kamina. I know, but it's a 3 7. All right, fine. Sana Kamina. That's not going to be confusing at all for us for us Americans. Uh, they're on the screen. Call out, uh, call out Ueno and Shunma uh, for their attack. I know the thirty-seven is like Sana. Yeah, I know. So uh, do they? Let's see how Ishi use one for one. Uh. But uh, either way. With uh, Kamina's uh, attack at Neon Zero, they will be here next week, uh, perhaps to face to face the two guys here. <laughs> Name com somewhat undetermined. I guess they would call them Sana Kamina, but either way, Sana Kamina <laughs> actually. So Sana Kamina uh, have basically been challenged by uh, the Rascals at. Uh, uh, perhaps next week, as the Rascals are planning on being there to uh, face them. Lockhart Inc. Are, uh, have a uh, promo backstage or somewhere, uh, someplace undetermined. But they talk about the end and the attack that they laid down on them and how weak they looked them. How weak, to, uh, weak they made them look last week on attack. And uh, they talk about how they were once a dominant tag team. They kept winning and winning, and nobody could beat them. And now that they've lost the tag belts, they just can't seem to stop breaking down, both physically and mentally, everything else. And uh, they feel like uh, they can take take the uh, the take a, a bit of um, 
take a, a bit of credit for the uh, breakdown of the end. And uh, looks like they'll keep uh, going after him, of course. We get Effie taking on uh, wrestling monster hunter Matthew Palmer. Good heat, decent wrestling. It only lasted six and a half minutes. Quick little match between them. Uh, the boot to leg DDT. Effie knocks him off, and that is that. And uh, it was the owner's latex. No shit. Fucking Sariano's fucking outfit. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, Effie picks up the win. High fives the fans as Matthew Palmer is still uh, in the ring, recovering as he gets to his feet. A.R. Fox and the Tate Twins hit the ring and uh, bring him back down and uh, knock him back down and lay him out. And uh, Fox wants to make sure that Matthew Palmer knows his place. You know, he's got a match here on attack, but better know, better know, uh, that he's just the new guy and that AR Fox and the Tate twins are here to take down anybody who thinks they're going to get his TV time. Throwbacks backstage once again with their beer and, uh, enjoying themselves. The body guys showing up and, uh, walk past them. They just seem to see the, uh, the, the spilled beer and the, the stickiness of the floors and they are, absolutely disgusted with themselves with uh with the the state of uh of the table and uh they're disgusted by the fact that they're drinking this this uh this swill and uh they decide and uh that's that's basically fighting words between the between these guys and these guys kind of start arguing and basically hey you want to get to the ring of course we do and uh it looks like we'll be uh, getting a match here very soon uh, before that, while we get them set up for a couple minutes, we get a speedball vignette uh, talking about his win at uh, the Gold Label Classic, doing his martial arts training and talking about uh, his facing off of Anthony Mayweather for the world title, and uh, remarking that it would be uh, it would be great to be able to uh, to end the reign of Anthony Mayweather and the fact that he doesn't seem to take anybody or anything seriously anymore. So once again, hyping up his uh, title match. And as we had a fight backstage, come out to the ring, the Neo body guys taking on the throwbacks just under eight and a half minutes. And uh, Preston Vance hits the proto bomb on Griff Garrison, gets the win. And uh, the Neo body guys with a win over the throwbacks tonight. We go to the back and Taylor Wyndham is beside himself. He seems to be going a little bit crazier than usual. He's got papers all over a desk and he's talking about inside information that he has that there are gold assets being hid, maybe from the IRS, maybe from people who want to take it. But there seem to be he has retained inside information that there are gold assets uh, that Vertigo Management has and he is on the hunt to look for it. And he seems to be almost wild eyed about it. It's, uh, it's something, something really that he could sink his teeth into and he's not able to, not able to quite find something about it, but he seems excited to be able to find, uh, such, such information here about, uh, vertigo management. And we get Ty Ray talks about Russell Zenith and, uh, doesn't quite know his place in it just yet. Uh, unsure about his future after the losses that he has been taking, but uh, looking to bounce back from that. And uh, I think within the next uh, couple weeks here, I think we'll be seeing him wrestling and uh, still unsure of where what he's going to do and where he's going to go. He was really planning on uh, becoming world champion at Neon Zero, and it didn't happen. So uh, and not sure where to go from here. <laughs> Main event, we get a uh, sort of a, not quite impromptu, but an unscheduled uh, heritage title match as uh, there was a sort of a quick challenge that was thrown down by Heath Miller and uh, Matt Cardona defending his heritage title tonight. Well, he was going to be in action. He decided to put the belt on the line. It does go just over 14 minutes. I need to change the name. Hits the radio silence on Heath Miller and it makes his second official defense of the Heritage title. 
And uh, fantastic heat and great wrestling for tonight's main event. Afterwards, Cardona, uh, you know, after another uh, successful title defense, he's he's uh, talking about Wrestle Zenith, and there seems to be no one on the horizon for him to face. And uh, once a challenger for Wrestle Zenith, that's when Drew Parker comes out. And uh, Parker, who's been uh, slowly moving up, uh, really looking forward to uh, taking on Cardona for the Heritage title. Before he can get too much in, though, Eddie Edwards comes out, and he, too, would also be interested in challenging. And it sounds like uh, these two may have an, uh, an argument and even a fight on their hands as to who will be the challenger for the Heritage title at Wrestle Zenith. 53, not bad, pretty good. I mean, we're still doing pretty A-OK -okay for that. All right. Episode three, Jesus. About this gimmick should be... <laughs> about this gimmick should be curling white after, you know. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> oh no. You saying we should just... Uh, you saying we should just give up this gimmick now? Just completely drop it? <laughs> Why does why does it do this? Why does why why is it that I can why is it that a hyperlink uh, can I just copy the link then? Do, can I just paste it and go? Why does Twitter have to be like this? Jesus Christ! Is it my browser? <sighs> there you go. Yeah, just in case you didn't know who was black, who was Stray Cat. Oh my God, I about had an aneurysm. Unless we get more races, this thing is fun. Dude, I about had an aneurysm when I was. That's okay. Now that I remember, now that I remember Stray Cat being a thing for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, I I about lost my shit when I was watching that because it was just like, just fucking Veda Scott just going. Oh man, it looks like she doesn't want to join the Vandals. She wants to, you know, be out on her own and be a be a, a lone cat. And it's just like, we get it. She's a stray cat. She's gonna remain stray. She's not gonna be part of a group. It's just like four different ways of her to saying, I get it. She's a stray cat. She's not gonna join a group as a stray cat. Otherwise, she's no longer a stray. <laughs> just i have lost my i about lost my mind i was like i get it <sighs> i just i just remembered that too i just remembered i about just like i said four different ways of being like yeah i get it she's a stray cat she's a stray she's not joining anybody gotcha got it <laughs> uh let's see here God, did I really do like four weeks of, uh, okay. I don't think I did anything on the last week. I really did three. This is, uh, this is really something I, I think I'm, you know, now that I think about it, it's like, oh, you know what? I am trying to make something out of the throwbacks in their gimmick. So it makes sense, uh, that we feature them on a semi-regular basis, even for a little one minute thing. Uh, da, 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 da. And this helps somewhat put over the new character. I wonder if I should do anything with Caleb Conley about this. Should I change his? Uh, should I change his name? His gimmick? I don't know. Have him be along with him still to do his thing, or should this just be something completely different? Uh, Calvin Tank and Trey Lamar. Uh, microphone for both. There we go. Boom. Match. Anthony Mayweather. And we get to see the in ring debut of Filipino Grigio. <laughs> and subsequent uh, getting shit on by the world champion. And eh, not an open match. Whoops. It's the world champion. Oh, stop it. Thank you. Yeah, no, the title's not going to be on the line for this.
Yeah, I hope they I hope they don't really change up much of the costumes though. I really hope they don't change up much of the costumes for Skabon. Uh, Lockhart Inc. Yeah, I was really pushing home the Lockhart Inc. stuff too, wasn't I? Microphone, microphone, microphone. Although it is kind of funny because obviously they're trying to make like different characters, but it's like how much worse uh, Saiko Unagi looks when she's in the, the get up. To be fair, same thing with like Risa Sarah with like that Lady Antoinette shit. I loved when they came out later and she had the wig back on because <laughs> like my more normie friends are like, what the fuck? What the fuck is she wearing? Uh, let's see here. JT Dunn. Uh, Nick Dinsmore, once again, not on screen. Let's see. Is this two, this two minutes? All right. Boom, boom. There we go. Seven, we're at seven. Cool. Commander Nakajima. Yeah, Commander Nakajima was literally just a... It was like they spent all the money on the jacket and a hat, and then they just put her in... A t-shirt and jeans with with her fucking name on it. <laughs> I forgot about that. It, it's like they spent all the money on the on the, the jacket and hat. Fantastic. Let's see. Ninjas. Tate twins. I think these guys have only faced off. Yeah, two on two. Not that often. They've usually either been six man tags or triple. Yeah, you know, so this is only like the third time. I'm proud of myself because, you know, it might be the fourth time. It might be an early, early one before all of this. Uh, let's see here. Give it to Yuta. Open match, all out. Decisive. Boom. We're at an hour seven. An hour seven. Uh, oh, that's right. I wanted to change. Uh, that's right. I wanted to change Jet Knight. Since he's more now just Kevin Knight. He might be like Kevin Jet Knight or something like that. Is that maybe how he actually is? Whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to worry about the fact that we're just getting him uh, we're just getting him uh, a little bit of screen time. Mm-mm-mm. See the Wyndham. Entertainment. Line of success. Boom. The the upside is is from hearing uh Arisa Nakajima's first time in America and not being used to the fact that we call each other by her by our first names around here. She did probably didn't have to suffer through people calling her Arisa this time which sounds like was a was a problem the last time for her that she didn't quite understand. Uh, let's see here. Ty Raven. Yeah. Charisma. We got 16. Cool. 1v1. Tim Donst. Ryan Davidson. Boom, boom. 15 minutes. This is going to go to a draw. Open match. And time limit finish. TV time remaining means TV time remaining. And TV is over. <laughs> we get one minute at the tail end to announce it. 
and that's it. Uh, fight, fight, success, success, boom. 60 minutes, everything's good. All right, let's do this. All right, Vertigo Attack episode 43, the third of four taped shows. We start off immediately with the uh, challenge that the Rascals had thrown down against Sana Kamina. And uh, we get their match here. Goes just over 10 and a half minutes. Zachary Wentz submits uh, Shunma Katsumata. And the Rascals, after the attack at Neon Zero, get, uh, get theirs back here in their official match. Uh, I mean, it's not too, uh, not too, too hard to believe that the rascals, of course, been a top tier team for a while. And, uh, let's see here. Everything pretty much, uh, going as, as, uh, planned here. The throwbacks are in the back once again with the beer. And, uh, this time they're not approached by the body guys, but instead, a uh, man who introduces himself looks a lot like Kyler Khan, who hasn't been around for a couple months. Uh, introduces himself as Filipino Grigio. I think I can uh, handle the changes. Yes. Uh, introduces himself as Filipino Grigio, and uh, considers himself a, uh, a, a wine and uh, champagne and general alcohol connoisseur, and uh, hates the the filthy hops. That uh, is this a Filipino man or no? <laughs> but um, so he is uh, disgusted by the Paps Blue Ribbon that is uh, around the table here and suggests a finer champagne and to enjoy the finer things in life uh, to a uh, also equally disgusted and perplexed uh, throwbacks, especially Eric Cannon. Change it here. Let's see. Very good. All right. Ratings likely to rise over time. All right, there you go. Marketable loses hurt momentum, though unusual. Large boost of psychology. Okay, okay. So very good. All right, things turned out pretty well. <clears throat> but uh, no, Filipino Grigio is an actual Kyler Khan thing that he does now instead of anything else, where uh, he just wrestles. I think in in like some sort of one piece outfit. And uh, brings along champagne and wine, and he'll drink it sometimes during the matches. So I was like, you know what? I'm not doing much with Kyler Khan anymore right now anyway. Let's give him this gimmick. Why not? All right. Tankman and Lamar, we haven't seen the uh, tag team champions in a little bit. They are uh, taking in the clubs and the nightlife, and uh, they they basically give a... Give a challenge to any of the teams in Vertigo. They're ready to defend the titles at Wrestle Zenith and uh, demand any team in Vertigo to step up and prove themselves at Wrestle Zenith. So to find find a way to uh, determine a challenger, and they will take them on uh, in December. We do get to see the in ring of Filipino Grigio as uh, he takes on the world champion Anthony Mayweather. And uh, in action, a non-title action, just over seven minutes, and uh, Anthony Mayweather hits the red sky on Grigio and pins him. And uh, that, is, that is pretty much that, at least for right now. Lockhart Inc. once again, uh, discussing how they have been held down by Vertigo Management for far too long. It's They've done hardly anything of note in the two years, two and a half years of existence for Vertigo. And uh, they're finally done with it. They're finally done being held down. They're rising up against a once top tag team, which is why they pick the end. They say, uh, you know, in in uh, they say, you know, in prison, you wanna you wanna prove yourself. You go after the biggest baddest guy in the uh, in the jail and kick his ass. Well, that's what they're doing here against the end, a feared vaunted team, and uh, whooping their ass. JT Dunn is backstage once again questioned about uh, about uh, Nick Dinsmore and the fact that he has a uh, um, a concussion and that he has not been around um, and he once again taunts Nick Dinsmore for what he did 
uh, getting in his way and once again says that Dinsmore was the one who crossed the line by putting his hands on him in the first place. Uh, yeah, you should just let wrestlers kind of do whatever you want. And uh, he knows he's watching at home and uh, basically looks straight into the camera and tells Nick Dinsmore, take this for what it is, roll over and retire and leave the wrestling industry so a guy like him can uh, can thrive. And that is basically that. We get the Neon Ninjas versus the Tate Twins. High-flying, fast-paced action. Both teams going balls to the wall. Superb wrestling between the two. They've always had, uh, I think, pretty good chemistry between the two teams. Goes just under nine and a half minutes. Yuta gets the Yuta lock on Brent Tate and gets the win. And Neon Ninjas, who I think have been pretty much even with... Uh, with uh, the Tate twins getting a solid win here. Uh, let's see. Here we go on Kevin Knight, the former Jet Knight. And uh, he hasn't been around for a little bit, but we do see a vignette showing his highlights from his uh, time in New Japan Strong and uh, showcase the fact that he will be in action next week on Attack. So we can look forward to him being there. Taylor Wyndham once again. For yet another week is uh, perplexed by everything that uh, that uh, he's been looking up. And uh, he feels that he is uh, even closer to the gold assets that, uh, that he feels has been hidden by management. He is going to get to the bottom of these assets and uh, find out exactly what it is and what they are hiding. And uh, once again, feeling a little bit more feverish and a little bit more manic as uh, Taylor Wyndham feels he's he's uh, getting even closer and he might soon be able to uh, crack this open. We get Ty Ray vignette. He also uh, has been doing uh, smaller indies and uh, shows some highlights from his matches there. And he will also be in action next week. So uh, we look forward to Ty Ray, who uh, had some things to say about his uneasy future last week, will be in action next week. We get to our main event, Tim Donst versus Ryan Davidson. Great wrestling and good heat between the two guys. It only goes 13 minutes. There wasn't a whole lot of time left in the show, and uh, it had a TV time limit. And unfortunately, we're at the end of TV and uh, unable to find a, uh, a winner here as the time limit expires. And that is it. The crowd is the crowd not too happy, especially the wrestlers not too happy. In fact, they continue fighting as uh, referees and, e and not, maybe not EMTs, but staff and some referees come out to uh, pull them apart as the show goes off the air. 57. Fantastic. We have got one more show. Mm. Hang on. My mouth is getting dry. Oh. All right. Mm -mm. We knock this out and that'll be that. Boom, ba -dum, boom. I can hear the gulping noises. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just had the I, I had the can pretty close to the mic, I guess. had this uh i had this cider thing that i bought and i never really finished over the weekend so i'm like yeah well you know what seems like a good time to do it why not also i can't uh oh can't show what on stream uh oh came across a picture oh boy <laughs> of a woman Congratulations. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, let's see here. Should it be open match? Yeah, we'll make it open match. Why not? <laughs> Showing her stray cat. Oh no. <laughs> uh 
Uh, decisive finish. I think that's about it. Not much there. I mean, I have a feeling, uh, I, I think I've seen plenty of pictures like that. <laughs> My husband sees, he'll punish me, but I'm going to stop. What do you think of patriarchy? Write in the comments. What was this on Twitter? <laughs> Engage with me. Yeah, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it turns out this is actually part of just the money laundering. This is actually just another money, um, another money thing. Now that Twitter does payouts for engagement, just some fake bullshit. Like when TNA had Raisha Saeed, it just happened to be like a, just happened to be like a, <laughs> a white woman in under the hijab. Uh, AR Fox once again with uh, Brandon Tate and uh, Brent Tate. This time, Kevin Knight, Joe Hennig, once again, entertainment, fighting, fighting, selling, selling. There's that, defeat, defeat, boom. <clears throat> At least I didn't go so crazy with, uh, stuff this time uh, let me see here this would be a uh, star quality star quality I think star quality probably there we go oh yeah I wanted to get a couple local workers because what better than a couple of local schmucks to put over <laughs> one of our lower tag teams like, listen, we don't want you guys to go any over any of our actual tag teams, so we're just going to go ahead and hire a couple guys for you guys to beat. How about that? So we got the Regal Twins on uh, on here. We got Chase Holiday. We got Mike Seidel. Also a good way of seeing some of these guys and their abilities in the ring. Eight minutes. Should just be a quick match. Regal Twins are an established tag team, so it makes sense. Nope, not called in the ring. Open match. Decisive. Boom. Regal Twins get a win. Can't just have them lose everything. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> One minute. Mike Bailey. This is just, uh, I guess it's star quality. I mean, this time we're not really, he's not really talking. So let's see. Five, nine, two, one, eight, one, five, nine, two, one. Okay. So we're still, we're still where we were on time. That's good. All right. <clears throat> Three way dance. We got Caleb Conley. We got oh, one called Mandus is already there. Darius Lockhart, boom, boom, 14, so an 11-minute match. Victor, Manders, uh, open match, sure. Decisive, yes. There we go. I should put the, I don't know if it matters all that much, but good enough for me to remember at least. All right, we got three more segments. We just knock this out and we'll be good to go. All right. Darius Lockhart, Jerome Daniels, Timmy Lou Retton, one called Manders, Arrow, Odinson. Oh, fighting, 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 selling, menace, menace. Uh, I guess the biggest successes would just be Paranodes and maybe everyone else kind of comes out neutral. Talk about earlier how Nakajima shouldn't go to AEW. Some people may know Kensuke Sasuke. 
Do people need to know much about Kensuke Sasuke? <laughs> Here we go. Ricky Starks, Ty Ray, 16 minutes. Uh, like what? Do you think Kensuke Sasuke is going to show up and do anything? Like only the people would care as a 1995 WCW fan. <laughs> Um, let's see, Ricky Starks, there you go, decisive win, boom. I mean, even I don't particularly care about Kensuke Sasuke. He hasn't been around in forever now. Uh, let's see. Entertainment and nothing as he's off screen. There we go. He retired like 10 years ago. Yeah. Damn, did we pretty much hit everybody? I mean, we did. We did, we did, we did. Everybody on the card involved. <laughs> you die of Masawa. Or you live to see your son impregnate a Joshi. <laughs> oh, but live long enough to become a Mudo. Uh, I think we're good. I thought it was going to be live long enough to see your son marry a Joshi and move to Canada. All right. All right. Vertigo attack episode 44, the fourth and final event. Uh, show in the taping here, 175. So we're slowly building up the TV tapings here. We start off. JT Dunn is starting off the show. He is hosting the official Nick Dinsmore GoFundMe uh, to help with his uh, with his uh, um, recovery process as well as his post retirement life. <laughs> and uh, after he rambles on for a few minutes about it, Nick Dinsmore shows up on the screen and uh, informs people that yes, he did have a concussion. However. Uh, he will be 100% uh, within the next couple of days, and he's excited to get back in to uh, to get back into it. But more specifically, he's going to be back next week, and he will be dealing with JT Dunn. So exciting news after all of this. Opening up the show, JT Dunn will have to deal with Nick Dinsmore next week for his actions. We get our opening contest. Kevin Knight taking on Joe Hennig goes uh, just over six and a half minutes and Kevin Knight getting a quick little victory here. And they actually got a 52. That's not terrible, honestly. It's actually quite nice. We might have to do a little bit more with him. 52 is actually a little bit higher up than I kind of thought. That's uh, that ain't bad. Uh, but yeah, good enough match uh, because of that. So there you go. But uh, what happens, of course, after that is as Kevin Knight celebrates and uh, shakes hands with Hennig, Fox, AR Fox, and the Tate Twins come out once again, lay out the both of them, get into their uh, faces, and tell them to remember just exactly whose house they are in. And that's AR Fox and the Tate Twins' house. Once again, knowing that. Knowing their place as the new guys, and uh, once a step, once again establishing himself, we get a quick little vignette that plays uh, to make it official that next week we will get Drew Parker taking on Eddie Edwards in next week's main event, 
Uh, and we will determine the next challenger for Matt Cardona's heritage title. Now, uh, Dinsmore, Dinsmore's been uh, at work so far. He hasn't been able to physically be there, but he did make sure to uh, to book Drew Parker and Eddie Edwards uh, for the number one contendership for the heritage title next week. We get the Regal Twins out. They're taking on uh, Chase Holiday and Mike Seidel. And a quick little match here, just over six minutes. The Regal Twins submitting Mike Seidel and getting the victory. Not much to say there about that. Uh, we get another vignette with Mike Bailey and his martial art training. And uh, we find out that he is getting ready to do at least one tune-up match for uh, Wrestle Zenith. And he will be there next week. Not sure who uh, who his opponent will be, but he will be there on attack next week in his uh, first uh, live live uh, in in the uh, building segment and match since winning the Gold Label Classic. We get a three way dance. Caleb Conley won, called Manders and Darius Lockhart himself finally being in a match. And uh, Caleb Conley goes first. It comes down to Manders and Darius Lockhart. And uh, one called Manders hits a lariat on Lockhart and gets the win. And uh, one called Manders with a nice little strong win there in this uh, three-way dance. With that, though, Darius Lockhart, a little bit incensed, has Daniels and Timmy Lou Retton come down and uh, start laying in on Manders. And uh, with that, over the course of weeks of uh, the taunting that Lockhart Inc. has done over the end, speaking of uh, three weeks ago when they got attacked as well, they come down to the ring to chase them off, and it looks like uh, we had the end uh, coming to, uh, even after everything that happened between Manders and Pero, it seems like the end were happy to come to his save, or at the very least, uh, chase off Lockhart Inc. after uh, their attacks and taunting as well. So we get our main event of the entire deal. Main event tonight, Ricky Starks in action against Ty Ray. Two guys who believe that their star power uh, is towards the top and will only get better. An exceptional match between the two. Fantastic match. Goes 13 and a half minutes. Need to change that as well. Ricky Starks beating Ty Ray with the Rochambeau. And uh, Ricky Starks getting the win in tonight's uh, main event. And then ends the show saying that he noticed that uh, Nick Dinsmore will be here next week. He himself is excited to, uh, to speak to Dinsmore next week about his involvement at Russell Zenith and who... Uh, he will get to face uh, at Wrestle Zenith, a man hopefully worthy of his star power. 57, fantastic. I'll take it. We had a strong series of matches, a uh, strong series of shows there. Ah. I mean, like a felt like a little bit of a hangnail or something. I'm gonna go to Vertigo real quick because I'm gonna change a couple things. Uh, first off, booking position available. BJW Tommaso Champa is being offered a contract with NWA. They already showed nine thousand people for that. Shine is uh, lowering their broadcasting stuff, so that's good. Uh, let's see here. We have got uh, blah, 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 blah. Matt Cardona. We want uh, edit move set. Uh, I don't want, I don't even want broski boot to be a thing. Create move. There you go. Let's see. Impact move. Let me make sure that I didn't add too many. Uh, okay, there you go. Can cause blood can be done onto a chair. I mean, it can be done onto a chair. It can be done through a table, technically. Uh, it can technically be done off ladders if you're uh, willing to destroy your tailbone. All right. There you go.
Uh, Dominic Tag Team is Alex King a free agent? I don't know. I don't know if Alex King is even in here. Uh, Alex. There's no Alex King. Is this Alex Kane? Wasn't. Is that the guy? I don't. I don't know if he is. Is that the guy in MLW that they're that they're uh, Alex Kane's the one guy that they're pushing pretty hard right now in MLW, aren't they? Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure he is. From what little from what little uh, from what little I've seen of MLW. Uh, what else was I going to do? Uh, oh yeah. Ricky Starks, Ricky Starks. There we go. Is a move called the Rochambeau in here? No, it is not. All right. Get rid of that. There you go. Impact move can cause blood. Not really can be done onto a chair. Yeah, it can, can be done through a table. Yeah. Can be done off. I probably wouldn't do it off a ladder. I think that would just be silly. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. There you go. Good, good, good. All right. I'm trying to think if there was anybody else. Uh, let me look real quick at his thing what are we what what is his move set look like does he have any move no he doesn't lariat lariato probably just do lariat there you go give him a lariat move set cannot be blank there you go give him a lariat big guy corn fed cowboy dude give him a lariat <laughs> Western Lariat. Ah, that's yeah, that's better. Hang on. Uh let's see here. Is that in here? Western Lariat. Boom. Uh don't forget the spear. Oh uh, yeah, I guess I could put Ricky Starks' spear in there. That's gonna be a secondary finisher. Should it be? Yeah, it's going to be a secondary finisher. Guys, I mean, I like him, but he's also a small dude. So Spear should just be a secondary thing. Uh, Rochambeau should probably be. This weird feat of strength from a smaller guy is probably what should uh, go. Uh, Eddie Edwards have his proper thing. I think I changed it. Yeah. Boston knee party. Oh, my God. I cannot. I cannot say that without thinking about Josh Matthews pretending to be like really serious and say it like three times as Eddie Edwards wins the his uh wins his first like uh TNA world title. Boston Day Party, Boston Day Party, he wins! Uh all right. Uh cool. So we're gonna make some money. 4,000, going to make another 9,000, 19,000. Yes, I didn't want to call too much attention to it, but uh, I have some special guests for Wrestle Zenith set up. <laughs> and uh, Severn might be one of them. Assuming, of course, that even as a, uh, even as a, uh, can I change his like official his official thing in here. Uh, Cause I don't specifically want him to be a road eight. Like I don't want him to be like a, well, I guess I could use him as a road. How much am I paying him? 60 bucks. I mean, he could just be a road agent for 60 bucks. Who's my other road agents. Now I want to, now I want to know who's, who's my other road agents. Cause I what it's like Dinsmore and someone else. Yeah, Nick Dinsmore, who's getting 50. Scott Armstrong is getting 90. So, honestly, an extra 60 to have Dan Severn there. What's his skills look like for that? 69, 73. All right. What's his? Uh, 68, 50. So, he's better than Dinsmore. 
And yeah, he's a little bit worse than Armstrong, but I mean, that's to be expected. So, all right. Yeah, 60 bucks, why not? Kojima. Yeah, I've thought about some guys. I've had some guys on the short list for guys to uh, potentially bring in. I don't think there's, I think I cleared out most of my other things as far as uh, guys were concerned. All right. It's getting, it's starting to get a little bit late. Hour 40. Jesus Christ. I still have to go through a whole fucking oh, Mesa Ruga. Uh, 60 bucks. Yeah, we'll give it to her. Uh, no, at least she wasn't asking for too much money. 80 bucks. That's fine. Sure. KZ versus Ricky Starks. I bet you Dragon Gate's got some written contracts. Guaranteed. Guaranteed Dragon Gate has written contracts. We'll take a look here in a second. Uh, let's see. Starlight Kid, Twisted Disco Knee. Oh, should I mention? Um, because I, I've mentioned before, obviously, that... Uh, oh, my God. The Good Brothers are the Evolve. Well, Evolve still exists here. But... Uh, Check their handshake ones. Oh, Dragon Gate's handshake ones. Let me look here. First off, what what is what is KZ at? Uh, let's see here. Exclusive written. All right, who's on? Who's on exclusive handshake? I don't. I mean, I guess I could. I could technically talk to them if they're on exclusive handshakes. That's a that's a fair fair few names, Ben K, BB Hulk, Don Fuji, Dragon Kid, Genki Horiguchi. Oh my God, Kagatora, Monday Ryu, Punchy, Saito. You know what would be funny as hell. If um if I actually brought in Dragon Gate talent, if I actually Kento Kobune has spent two years with Dragon Gate, is he uh pre SBK and pre fired? <laughs> Considering some of the guy, ooh, how much is he? Fuck you. Kanda Yuzushi Kanda Yosuke Santa Maria. 1400 Taku Iwasa. I don't know. They probably just picked him up. I don't know. 18 years with Dragon Gate. Tells me that he's probably been there for a little bit. I don't know. What happened in June 2020? Were Dragon Gate using him at some point during COVID? That's probably why. You know, it'd be funny, though, if I brought in Kagatora, Saito, and Horiguchi, but literally they just show up in their Jimmy gimmicks, and I just have, and I, he's not been public for years. I don't know. Road agent makes sense. Yeah. I just bring in Horiguchi, Kagatora, and, and Saito, and I just bring them in as, as the Jimmies. And then just pretend like the Jimmy's never left and they just reformed in America. <laughs> I would do that just to get the Americans to, to sing along with their, uh, with their theme. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Part of me wants to do that now. Part of me is just like, you know, that'd be fun. Just bring back old gimmicks. Get some of the other older guys. Just bring back Mad Blanky. WWE call up Pete Dunn. Oh, does he get to be Pete Dunn? Oh, yeah. This is a time where he wasn't Butch yet. So he gets to actually be Peter Dune. Fantastic. New champion in Impact. The North have won the World Tag Team titles. Hmm. 
Uh, let's see. Havoc beat Jordan Grace for the Impact Knockouts title. Interesting. So, yeah, uh, I think I've mentioned before that I usually have, I have a test version of this save so that I can pre-book stuff like that because it's already been an hour 45. I've only just gone through my TV shit. And um, I thought about doing something else, but I think I might just do the one. I think I might just do the one uh, idle pro event and then call it good. But um, let's see the Brotherhood in Smash. Tommaso Ciampa joining uh, NWA. But um, yeah, so there were a couple of interesting things that happened that I really hope don't actually happen in uh, in this uh, in this world. Let me see. Just making sure here. We got four days left here. The first thing that happened was uh, RNG landed on the RNG landed on Becky Lynch. And she got hit with a uh, scandal where she was caught in like a drug ring. Obviously fired, obviously toxic, but a free agent nonetheless. So that was the first major thing to have happen. The second other thing, <laughs> the second other thing that I don't want to, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to jinx was uh, I'm putting Momo Watanabe in a match here on this live stage six nights before our big show where she defends the title and she got a concussion. So it is uh, it is imperative that I, I, I'm really crossing my fingers that that does not come back to life in this save. The last thing I need is my champion hurt. And she's up against, I think, fairly uh, safe people, relatively. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> well, it wasn't Becky Lynch this time. Holy fucking shit. I I brought this on. Oh, no. <laughs> so the RNG hit once again, but this time it wasn't Becky Lynch. It was fucking Tetsuya Naito. Holy shit. Shortlist now. You're goddamn right. Who's Who am I under right now? We're moving to Vertigo. The minute he's no longer toxic, he's I'm I'm giving him a contract. I'm going to make sure every month uh, he's got what? Six months minimum. After six months, <laughs> I'm going to keep checking him every month. Hey, you still toxic. You still toxic. <laughs> By the way, could I sign him? I'm still too small for him, dude. No one wants to hire you right now. Are you shitting me? Uh, yeah, so clearly they fired Nido. Um, let's see. Anything else happen? I saw something. Martina agree agrees to deal with AEW. Uh, that means if I use, I mean, that means that she's what? She's basically given her notice today, I think, right? Is this going to be the thing? Does she leave immediately or does she give notice? Let me look. Contract is 28 days remaining from an initial length of ongoing. Okay, so she has, I have one month left of Martina. Well, that uh, Queens of Kanpai uh, team really, uh, really short lived reunion between the two. Sad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. Shit. 
Well, I, I I don't think I'm gonna use them in their team format because I'm not gonna fuck over I'm not gonna fuck over Natsu for this. Cause I still want to use Natsu Samire, of course. So Yeah, I'm just gonna job the fuck out of Martina. Uh I think I could still I, I think I could still book around that. Let me see here. Is she is she one of the people gone for uh yeah, she is one of the people gone for step up. Uh and this man, I ain't gonna fucking be able to use her hardly. Nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna build some people off of her. I'm gonna build a couple people off of her, I think, if at all possible. Um let me see here. Uh, two days. We're still we're still we're still doing yeah, we still had to deal with a lot of shit there, so I almost want to rebook this show now. Be like, oh, you know what? Let me rebook around this. I might, I might change out a couple people. Honestly, now that, now that I, now that I know she's gone. The spring. Adam Page, Chaz Betts, and Colt Cabana. What a team. Hangman Gable and fucking Colt Cabana. David Starr, to, oh boy, David Starr going head to head with Miro. Did David, did David, is, is the story that uh, David Starr was with uh, Miro's double jointed wife? Hangman's not needed for that team, yeah. <sighs> Let's see here. All right, we're at the show. We're at night of the show. I uh, don't know if there's anything else. Nothing seems to be going on there. AM portion. I don't think there's anything I want to change there. Oh, yeah, I am interested in what's going to happen here because uh, I added some new venues because there was a severe lack of venues in Japan that are used by Japanese promotions. I think most notably, uh, and it wasn't even in the mod. I literally had to put it in myself was fucking KBS hall. How in God's name do I go to Osaka? And I personally had to put in, it's it, because it's not Kobe Sambo Hall, as far as I know. I think KBS Hall is different, right? Yeah, because Kobe is a different. It's a different place. How is KBS Hall? How is it not? How did I have to physically put this in here? It's not like it's some unknown place. Yeah. So now there's a lot new places here. I also I couldn't change Raigoku KFC Hall. Because it fits more than 150. It fits like 400. So I put in a second one. I just named that number two. And then put in a proper KFC hall. That fits the, the amount of people that it should be fitting. 732. I mean, I don't want to do... Sh I'm going to be at Shinjuku Face next week for the big show. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. So, yeah, we'll do KFC hall. Now, now that it has a more proper 400 rather than the 150, I don't know why people, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a Tokyo Joshi pro does some weird setup that with that, but no, I'm pretty sure they still get the, uh, I'm pretty sure they still get the bleachers out for Tokyo Joshi pro. Since the college hoop series has ended, even thought about the next college sports game series to play. I honestly wouldn't mind doing another thing of college hoops. I'm also kind of sort of waiting because people have finally cracked the, uh, they finally cracked the, uh, um, encryption on the PS three, maybe the three. So no, it's mostly just the PS three PS three version of college hoops to where you can actually update like jerseys and courts and stuff. Yeah. 
So that's been something that I've been I've been paying attention to on Discord. They're still working on it because, you know, 300 plus teams, but yeah, they finally did it. And uh, you know, they ha- they haven't been able to do it for anything like uh I don't think like NHL 2K10 or uh I think most notably uh All Pro Football 2K8, which would be like probably the next biggest one besides College Hoops. And even then, College Hoops is still very limited. Like the people who made it kind of abandoned it, but people have kind of taken up the mantle of like, all right, let's see what we can actually change. So I'll probably wait. I'll probably wait just a little bit um, about that. By the way, three followers away from a thousand. Yes. Three followers, two followers away from a thousand. In fact, Another fight forever stream time. Since that just popped up, Rich81 Walsh. Appreciate it. Two followers from a thousand. God damn. Even though the game's a desert. Yeah, all pro football be amazing. And that'd be the one that everyone would just go ham on if uh if uh that was ever broken. If that was ever broken into. Well, I want a uh, Yuki Arai. There's too many fucking Yukis. God damn it. I should just change Kamiyu's name to actually just Kamiyu. Put it all in like uh, uppercase letters like Kushida. She's just Kamiyu. <laughs> or the new M. Dickey. Yeah, they finally added workshop. So now M. Dickey's finally embracing. That's how you know that he's not going to probably work on the game anymore. Is because he's finally embracing mods. And I know that was a thing like a year ago. That uh, that uh, someone had mentioned that they figured out the modding part. And then they emailed M. Dickey. They emailed Matt Dickey about it. And he basically told them to keep it hush. So it was like, oh, maybe he doesn't actually want modding. It seems like he wants to keep that hush hush for whatever ungodly reason. So now it seems like they finally added the, you know, uh, ability to um, mod stuff. I don't know the extent of it, honestly. Oh, the new school game that he made. Oh, I don't. I, I got to be honest. I don't know if I care that much. I care about Wrestling Empire. That's about it. I think I used to play like the... I think I had like the jail one at one point and it was just... Eh. I don't know. 15 bucks on the Switch. That reminds me. I haven't played... Uh, I bought MLB The Show 23 because it was on sale and I haven't hardly played it at all on my... Uh, yeah, Hard Time. That's what it was. Yeah. On my, uh, on my Switch. This is what I have to resort to because they won't put the show on fucking PC. I had to res- I have to resort to finding out all this uh um uh what do they call it? I have to, to find out all this uh let me make sure I get the right things here for people who have the least and most momentum to you know gain or lose uh match to be open. There we go. Um yeah, I had to resort to finding out about all the modding that people have done now for uh, NHL Legacy Edition, which honestly I prefer because I've seen enough of NHL 24 coming out and I'm just not into it. I just I looked at it and I just I really was just like, I'm not buying it. I'm just not going to buy it. It just looks like shit. I cannot buy it. Uh. Noah, let's see here. Hikari Noah, Jungle Kiona. This is on there. Star quality, star quality. There you go. Yeah, it just looks way too too busy and gimmicky for me. And honestly, I actually viewed some some footage of me playing like NHL twenty three. And it just felt so fast paced compared to when I was playing Legacy Edition. I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even realize just how much faster paced it actually was, until I, until I, uh, you know, was playing Legacy Edition, and then I would see videos of, 
of something else. Oh, wait. Asahi doesn't have to take the loss here. That's right. Is Martina here? She is here. I'm gonna make her I'm gonna make her try to take the loss. I'm gonna talk her into it. I'm gonna talk her into it. Hey. I'd like you to put someone over. And that someone's gonna be uh, a nobody. You mind putting over a nobody? I wouldn't be willing to make that promise. I mean, does it really matter if I piss her off? I don't think it's going to matter if I piss her off. Let's see here. We'll keep her strong. We'll try not to completely piss her off, but you're still going to eat a pinfall. Yeah, that's fine. You can be pissed. I don't care. You're leaving. You're on your way out. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, your opinion, oh boy, adding bug additives to food that just showed up. I said, I have no legs. I mean, no words, no words for this. Am I going to hell? Nah, you're fine. All right. So that was supposed to be Asahi, but, uh, who obviously would, would take the, uh, would take the, uh, the loss. I bet you I could probably find something better for Martina. If she shows up at Step Up, I could probably. Uh, actually, I'm trying to think here. Is there a better place to put her? No, because pretty much every other match means something. So. Let's see. You say he's Jericho's kryptonite. Like, well, he won't find a way to fall, do some sort of falling Judas effect to him, <laughs> which would be hilarious to watch. All right. I'll give it to Asahi and I'll see if there's a better way to, uh, I'll see if there's a better way to do this. Uh, you're to be the victor, not called in the ring, open match, decisive victory, uh, flash pinfall. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Next match. Man, I just went from one roll up to another, didn't I? Jesus Christ almighty. Maybe I shouldn't. Slip Train Angels Revelation. We got 13 minutes on that. We've got, uh, I think Raku needs a victory. And Harn and Echo can take a loss. Just just tweak her knee. She'll be fine. She'll, she'll, she'll just tap out immediately. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's do, uh, let's take away the flash pinfall. I don't want to do one roll up into another. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got two minutes on this one. We got Raku. Uh, oh my God. Psycho Nagi. And... Now Ishikawa and Yuki Arai, Arai. Oh my god. Let's see. Entertainment, entertainment. They're off screen because they're not involved. But puts them over as we will have a match there. Do that three minutes. We've got uh, Miyako Matsumoto, Chie Koishikawa, Natsu Samire, 
We do uh, entertainment, entertainment all the way. Here we go. Match. All right. Now we're now we're getting through a good chunk of it here. We're we're halfway through putting all this in. Natsu. Me a Coco. Boom. Boom. 14 minutes. Natsu. Open match. Decisive victory. Uh, at ringside. Is it a good idea to pay Martina to just be at ringside all that money? Here, we'll at least try to get something out of her since she's going to be out there anyway. We'll at least try to get something out of her entertainment skills. Let's see. There we got two minutes. Yep. Momo. Hikari. Now Kakata. Uh, microphone, microphone, microphone. Uh, there we go. And this there, four minutes. May Mika Awada involved, who I can't use because she's gone. That's fine. Minor successes. Boom. All right. 11, 12. Let's do a Mio Momono Momoko Momokahana Zono. All right. Get this hopefully under two and a half hours. Jesus. <laughs> As we talked enough about other stuff, just get it done. Out the door. There you go. All right. Four more segments. Three of them are promos or just angles. That's fine. Boom. Three. We got Mio Momono. Uh, Michiko Miyagi. And Momoka Hanazono. And Himika. So, selling, uh, fighting, fighting, star quality, sure. Uh, neutral, except for, I guess, here. Because save and chase off. Yeah, that's about it. C angle. Let me make sure. Yeah, Maria's not here. That's as I assumed. Because she wasn't last. She wasn't in this version of it again. So. Miyu. Mirai. There you go. Three minutes. And there, two more, a match and an angle. We need our main event. Main event, jungle, Saya, Nodoka, Momo, Hikari, and now, there you go. 21 minutes total. And a big thing here, Jungle Kiona, loser Momo. Open match, decisive victory. Uh, pinfall finish. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's see. Angle. Boom. Two. Q. 
Kiana. Well, Jungle Kiana. Saya. Nodoka. Momo. Uh, Charisma there. We'll do her acting. And uh, minor success is at least there. Boom. How much? 113. 113. That's exactly what we had. Cool, cool. All right. You an Iowa State fan or an Iowa fan? I would consider myself more an Iowa State fan. You know, I'm one of those I'm one of those people who kind of root for both teams, but you know, if they're facing each other, I'm gonna be Iowa State hundred percent of the time. <clears throat> and I think everything else is good. 113, everything is good. Uh, shows everything is good with that. Booking analysis is fine, so I think we're ready to go. All right, here we go. Idol Pro Live Stage 39. We are six nights away from uh, from Step Up coming up here, and uh, we're gonna open up the show with Sayuri Namba running down the card. And uh, not exactly um, uh, being interrupted as she's out here with AI Princess, who, uh, you know, briefly discussed their match against Death Riot and um, wish to forget that and are hoping to have a less violent match at uh, Step Up. College team that I just dislike? Not really. I mean, maybe just the ones that everyone kind of hates, like Ohio State and Alabama. But even then, I don't know if I pay enough attention to college sports to care you know I'll, I'll i'll care about like you know the iowa state stuff but yeah, i don't really hate a team honestly i don't know uh we get our first matchup here opening matchup arisu endo and uh rena taking on marika kobashi and mocha miyamoto and uh decent enough little match between them decent reaction uh subpar wrestling <laughs> did arisu have to carry this well technically rena carried this oh my god broken met metar metatarsal oh no did we we break a teenager uh-oh just under 10 minutes rena submitted mocha miyamoto so i guess it wasn't bad enough what what the fuck is that uh, broken uh meta tarsal what is your meta tarsal it's in her foot i see a lot of feet uh head neck shaft and base let me see here i see a lot of foot stuff right now uh yeah so it's kind of like just in her foot like it, it's the bone it, it, okay so it looks like it's one of the bones Probably in the middle of your foot. That's what it seems to be. Yeah, it's probably not actually that bad. If the fact that she was able to finish and still hit the and still submit her, my assumption is she's probably not uh, backstage heat on Mocha Miyamoto after a Bosch caused Rena to get hurt. Oh no! Am I firing in someone else now? <laughs> Am I gonna? I have to fire someone else. I'm writing. Listen, listen. We got some new, fresh TJPW girls to be coming in. We got, we got, we got, we got the Wakana Uehara's and the Himawaris of the world. If you can't stop injuring people, Moko, you're gonna get thrown out. <laughs> you, we can easily replace you with Himawari. Ah, uh, so a vignette is uh is played here, uh, quickly detailing the uh, the history here. A dick. <laughs> what? She hurt someone. She broke the foot of a teenager. Fuck off. And get more out of. Uh, I'm gonna get more out of Wakana Uehara just showing up, just spinning around in her dress, and have that one middle-aged Japanese dude going Wakana. <laughs> 
Hang on, I think I have the sound bite. You know, she's still a young lion. I don't care. I'm gonna I'm gonna replace her with a Wakana so that we can just have a whole crowd of. <laughs> What's that? I gotta I can't. What are we doing? We have a tag team match coming up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can we? We gotta ring the bell. Yes, sir. We understand. Okay. <laughs> so is Wakana and Himawari. Yeah, but they might not hurt anybody. We'll bring in Toga. She's got those. She's got those forearms. We need those forearms. We need those devastating forearms to come in here. Um, <laughs> we got. Uh, so we have announced for step up here a quick rundown of uh, Hikari Noah and Jungle Kiona before they uh, sort of end up facing off in a uh, six-person tag in the main event tonight. Uh, they will be facing off at Step Up in six nights in a two out of three falls match. So we at least add uh, that match here. Cool. I even added that. It's like I knew this was eventually going to happen. I actually didn't. <laughs> I, I don't remember when I added some of these, but perfect. I'll take that. Does that actually? Okay, perfect. So we've got Hikari Noah versus uh, Jungle Kiono. There we go. I want to. I want to remove that. Oh my God! I met, I forgot to put two out of three falls. Modify it. There we go. Uh, two out of three balls match there you go all right two out of three falls at step up in six nights we get our next match yuri versus asahi good heat decent wrestling between the two went just under nine minutes yuri getting the victory over asahi uh, hopefully not leading to Asahi having a mental breakdown, but uh, nonetheless, Yuri getting the victory here. Uh, solid win for her. Let's see here. Post-match grabs a microphone and uh, decides to call out Ram Kaicho, and she wants to fight her at Step Up and uh, wants to get, get a match going between them as well. So uh ram comes out and uh accepts and it looks like we will have uh, another one-on-one -on -one match there as well so at step up pre-book that match we have uh yuri versus ram kaicho boom mental what i think i think during her last bits i think she had some issues Asahi did during some of her last like few weeks at, at Ice Ribbon, especially in the dojo. Like, I think 4chan was about the only people to really like go into it. Where I guess she was like locked in a room. She was at like the Ice Ribbon Dojo. She like locked herself in a room and refused to come out. And then like her parents got called and had to coax her out. Now once again, I don't know how true this actually is that she had this like this breakdown at the Ice Ribbon Dojo before she right before she left for Actress Girls. And it came to a point where she was having like a, a, just a meltdown and locked herself in a room and had to have her parents because once again, 4chan can make things believable. I mean, they made they made Sean Ross Sapp or, or uh, Dave Meltzer and all them believe that. Uh, I saw the thread in real time where they, they made a lot of wrestling journalists believe that uh, Mace and Mansoor were uh, just burying the shit out of L.A. Knight and uh, Gunther. It was pretty funny. I saw that and I was like, what? And like, obviously, they didn't have any clips, but now I see that they probably didn't actually say that. <laughs> Uh, Sleep Train Angels taking on Revelation. I don't think they faced each other maybe more than once right now. But yeah, Great Heat, Decent re Wrestling went just under 11 minutes. Raku hits the Kawazu drop on Haru and Neko and gets a win. 
And uh, Sleep Train Angel's getting a solid win here. Let me see here. Aaron and Echo actually the best worker out of all of them. But then again, maybe Raku and Unagi would do a little bit better with uh, doing a bit better as a team. It'd be interesting if I could actually put them in enough matches to like force the chemistry between them. It would be funny. Uh, Post-match, uh, they do say that they are looking forward to a competitive match. And they heard AI Princess uh, earlier in the night talk about uh, wanting to have a match at step up. And they said, you know what? I, we'd be happy to face them. And uh, we're going to put our name out there as uh, we should face them. So it looks like we will have also uh, AI Princess, who kind of threw out the challenge. And it seems to be accepted by the Sleep Train Angels. There we go. Filling out the card here. All right, we've got Miyako Matsumoto and Chie Koishikawa coming out for a match. Uh, Miyakoko taking on Natsu Samire one on one and uh, discussing uh, some things and decided that she was going to uh, lend a proposition to Natsu uh, with Martina out there as well. Uh, that she bet them a free night of drinking. Mia Coco Miyak, uh, said she's very thirsty, and so did Chie, and they were ready to drink. And they bet a free night of drinking if Mia Coco could beat Natsu Samire tonight, which uh, uh, she accepts. And uh, we have the match. Natsu Samire, though, in uh, 11 and a half minutes, elbow drops Miyako <laughs> Matsumoto. Fantastic heat and good wrestling as uh, Natsu carries Miyako Matsumoto to this match and uh, gets the win. So there you go. No free drinks for her tonight. And uh, we go backstage. The Royal Spirit Champion Momo Watanabe is getting the troops lined up as uh, she gives the marching orders for uh, Hikari Noah and now Kakuta. Now, she is uh, very serious. And uh, she reminds them of the last time they teamed up in six-person tag action. Now was the one who took the loss. And, uh, well, Momo doesn't take a lot of losses, and she's not someone who likes to take losses. So she doesn't want to be embarrassed once again by the who she feels are inferior free Wi-Fi. And uh, tells Hikari and now to not embarrass her again by losing tonight's match. So... Uh, get it together and uh, win this main event. We get May Saruga coming out. She has been uh, calling for uh, uh, some matches as well as uh, she wanted a, a nice big comeback match after her uh, big cage win over Momoka Hanazono uh, a couple, almost two months ago now. She hasn't been doing too much, but she wanted a challenge and uh, she said that she talked to management. And she announces that she had a match. She uh, privately approached Mika Awada, uh, who we also haven't seen in a little while, uh, for a match. And it looks like Mika Awada will show up at Step Up. And we will get a one-on-one -on -one match between them. So we've got uh, Mei Saruga and Mika Awada. And I don't know if they've faced each other since... They have not faced each other since Shining Stage First Live a year and a half ago. So this is not since May beat her for the title have these two faced off once again. So this is a rematch from 18 months ago that these two will have at Step Up. We get to uh, Mio Momono taking on Momokahana Zono. Fantastic heat and great wrestling. Mia Momono hits the code red on Momoka in just over 13 and a half minutes. Gets a solid win here. Uh, seems to pretty much kind of not maybe carry, carry her, but uh, definitely do a little bit of a carry here for this segment. Solid match between the two, however. Uh, Mio getting the win. Mio uh, has not been too fond of Michiko Miyagi recently and calls her out. And it looks like she's about to uh, maybe challenge her for a match before she could do that. Momoka Hanazono has grabbed her bubble wand and has cracked Mio Momono over the head with it. And uh, with that, Miyagi strolls on down, gets into the ring, and starts stomping away at her as uh, Momoka uh, taunts her. And as they're doing this, Himika Arita comes down to the ring 
and uh, chases them off and uh, comes to the aid of Mio as uh, Miyagi and Momoka decide uh, today's not the day to fight. So there you go. Himika coming out for the save for, uh, for Mio here. And let me see here. How far deep are we in here? Okay, we are just before the main event. We get a quick promo with the strong kickers out. They say that uh, Mari Kota are not here. They aren't even bothered to be here before their big uh, before their big uh, title match. And um, perhaps they won't even show up at Step Up in six nights. You know, insult them a bit more about uh, being no shows tonight. Reiterate their belief that the wins that Mari Kota have been able to get against them in just about any time have been flukes. And uh, when it all comes down to it, they won't win this time. So uh, we have the, the, the last little bit here of the Strong Kickers insulting Mari Kodo as uh, they will have their match in six days at Step Up. Main event going into a, a main event for our uh, final show before Jungle Kiona, Saya Kamitani, Nodoka Tenma taking on Royal Spirit Champion Momo Watanabe and Free Wi Fi, Hikari Noah and now Kakata. An exceptional match between all performers here. Uh, now and Saya Kamitani seem to be the weakest of the performers. <laughs> Damn. Uh, no real surprise that Jungle Kiona and Momo Watanabe were the. Uh, the top people there. So you sacrificed Rena for Jungle Kiona. Nonetheless, child sacrifice. What do you mean sacrificed Rena for Jungle Kiona? What do you mean sacrificed her for her? That doesn't even make sense. Kiona's already been here. But uh, nonetheless, a shocking win as uh, Momo was. Uh, was worried about free Wi-Fi dragging her down and embarrassing her. Oh, Momo. I sacrificed Momo for Jess. And uh, Jungle Kiona, a uh, diving splash. And for the first time uh, in, I think, a year and a half, over a year, Jungle Kiona pins Momo Watanabe, becomes only the second person in Idol Pro history Coming six nights before her big title match against Sayakami Tani, Jungle Kiona becomes the second person behind Mei Saruga to pin Momo Watanabe, pin or submit Momo Watanabe in Idol Pro. So uh, a bit of a, a bit of a historical uh, moment there as uh, Kiona getting uh, getting the pin there for her team, and a lot of momentum for the challengers going in here. Between Kiona for Hikari and Saya for uh, Momo, as uh, her and as uh, Kiona, Saya, and Nodoka uh, celebrate their win and uh, are ready to take on their matches. As uh, Momo cannot believe what has happened, she's outside of the ring, sitting with her title clutched as tightly as she can, as she heads to the back. And Momo seems to be clearly shaken up over uh, over this. She's not used to losing. And, uh, yeah, she gets, she gets pinned here and it seems to, to shake her a bit going into this match. So we'll see what happens as we go to step up in six nights, 61. All right. I'm going to tell, I, I wouldn't normally give encouragement to her. I'm going to tell her she's awesome. Cause she's pissy right now. Um, I'm going to give the, I'm going to give, uh, tell Momo she's doing great. And because she helped, she helped with that match. Kiona also did too, but Kiona is already like loyal to me. So, and she's already extremely happy. So I don't think I care that much. Um, let's do, when was the last time I told Mia Momono she did great last month? Ah, uh, we'll do it again. Actually, we'll do Nodica. We'll do Nodica. Maybe that'll maybe that'll uh urge her to leave Tokyo Joshi Pro. Seem please, seem please, seem please. Maybe that'll uh maybe that'll um start start loosening the uh loosening the bolts here on uh 
the grasp that some of these these other companies have on this talent. Uh, let's see here. Himika Rita fully fits. Let's see. Rena. All right. What was what's Rena got? Uh, 40 days unavailable for booking. Oh, God. So she was uh, uh, able to, uh, to finish the match, but she is, uh, she's out for 40 days. Let me look at pre-booking. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can, I can change that. That's a pretty, that's a pretty throwaway six person tag. I'll, that'll be fine. Thankfully, she's not involved in anything big. War games. I bet you war games didn't actually happen at war games. No. Uh, retain title. For the title. Rhea Ripley defeated Chelsea Green and Mia Yim for the NXT women's title. Kushida defeated Joaquin Wild. Uh, Keith Lee defeated Damian Priest and Isaiah Scott to retain the NXT title. Let's see. Sideline out injured. Shattered knee. Looking at a year of action. Holy shit. I mean, it's one thing that uh, 40 days of no arena, but NXT fucking broke Shane Strickland. He's out for over a year. Oh, my God. One year, two months, two weeks. That's 14 fucking months. Shane Strickland just shattered his fucking knee. He's gone for the next 14 months. Oh, Lord. Well, I mean, that's bound to happen because, you know, he's still he's still existing. Rest in peace. I wonder if I should get rid of. Well, I haven't gotten rid of Brody. I did. I did. I did turn Jay Briscoe to deceased. I wonder if I should do the same thing to Brody and Wyatt. I feel like that probably should. If I did it for if I did it for Jay Briscoe, I feel like it only makes sense. I don't know. I think that was a thing that was even talked about in like the the subreddit, the fantasy booker subreddit, where it was like, you know, it really comes down to, well, you know, do you want to honor them by book continue booking them or do you just want to have them gone or I don't know. John Moxley beat uh John Moxley won the AEW world title. Who did he beat? Jericho and Darby Allen in a ladder match. Oh lord. And Sammy Guevara defeated Cody in a ladder match. So what what did they just have TLC? Holy shit. What is the what is full gear here? Okay, so triple threat ladder match main event, which followed a ladder match TNT title match, which followed a tag team cell match, a tag team hell in a cell match between the hybrid two and Colt Cabana and Sugar Dunkerton. And then you have a three-way between Hikaru Shida, Bia Priestley, and Ronda Rousey. What is this card? There's AJ Styles. AJ Styles and 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 of course fucking <laughs> Don't tell this wasn't his debut, right? This wasn't his debut. He's been okay, he had dynamite. Oh my god, he teamed with John Moxley, lost to Jericho and Darby Allen. And then and then they job him out to Jungle Boy and Dominic Mysterio. AJ Styles has been in for all of like four days and they job AJ Styles out to Dominic Mysterio and Jungle Boy, which honestly isn't even worse than when he was leaving. When he was jobbing out to Riddick Moss and then Buddy Murphy. So I guess it could be worse. Styles did job out to Riddick Moss, so, you know. A lot worse is what it could be. I don't know if I'll go all the way to Friday. I might just uh, knock it here. Just a couple days shy. 
Well, we'll see. Just in case something happens. Cross my fingers. We can. We we just got two more nights to do. Because it's what Thursday or Friday? It's Friday. So we got to get to Friday. Uh, not much happening there. All right, I'm about done. I'm about done. We just got to get to Friday. I won't even do the PM right now. <sighs> 40 day. Why are all my people getting hurt? You know what? It's also it's well, no, because I was going to say Yuki Ainu and I think Lady C are both not working other places. I was going to say, well, it's because they're working other places, but the other two people are not. In fact, I think Rena is not as well. Let's see. Lady C is only working for me. That's not good. Rena, I believe, is only working for me as well. Oh, boy. Yuki Aino is also only working for me. So, not great. Rena has morale issues. You're kidding. Annoyed, yeah. Annoyed that she got her goddamn foot broken. <laughs> And Mocha, uh, and Mocha is annoyed because she broke somebody's foot. <laughs> you know what would be funny is if I, I... I wonder how the game would take it if I were to just give Mocha like a... Uh, <laughs> if I were to give Mocha like a, uh, uh, a bonus. Zoe Lucas, James Castle. Okay, Jordan, Devlin, and Martina split up. All right. People splitting up right before they start going big time. Lindsay Snow and Mark Britt. Okay. There we go. I'll just stop here on Thursday. I'll stop a day short. Just so I can call it a night. Fuck it. I'll do one more day. Assuming nothing big happens here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Dump, Dump Matsumoto takes control. Vert Vixen wins new fans. She won new fans in my in my friend group. So yeah, that makes sense. All right, Friday. Just hope nothing nothing has happened. We can just go on to the PM and then call it a night. That's what I'm planning. All right, let's see here. Uh, save it first. Nothing, nothing. I think a whole lot of nothing, honestly. So cool. Nothing big happened. All right, we've do we've dealt with too much big stuff happening right now, so I'm okay with this. All right, so there we go. We have got uh, step up 2022 tonight. Six matches for sure. There's definitely a couple more in there that didn't get uh, thrown in there. Uh, one that we'll have to change slightly because one of our people's injured now. Uh, so that's fine. We got some, we got some decent matches coming up for that. We've got a title defense coming up. We got the rubber match between Hikari Noah and Jungle Kiona. We've got the, uh, big grudge match between strong kickers and Mari Kodo. Uh, hopefully a banger of a match between May Saruga and Mika Iwata. So. We got some stuff going on. I appreciate uh, you guys being here for all of this and uh, and uh, hanging out. Let me see here, just in case anything happened. I, I was a little scared, honestly, to check my followers to just see someone be like, you know what? I'm just going to leave. Like, oh, all right. Well, thank you, guys. I greatly appreciate you guys being here. I'll have to uh, write up the new shows here and uh, get that taken care of. And I'll probably have other stuff that I'll want to do as well. So, yeah, thank you guys. If you are watching on YouTube, I thank you for continuing to watch as well. And uh, I hope to see you guys at the next one for Idol Pros Step Up.